Hey guys, I'm AH Designs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, you're probably coming to this video expecting to see footage from a Legend of Zelda photo shoot, but right now you're seeing footage from an aquarium. And that's because when myself and Go Beyond Cosplay decided to go do this photo shoot in Toronto, well, we had a four to five hour drive ahead of us, so we decided to go the day ahead of time and also hit the Ripley's Aquarium. I had actually never been to this aquarium before, been to many others, but never to this one specifically, so it was really lovely to actually spend some time and take it easy and not have to rush into photo shoot stuff right away, and, and just spend time with a friend and have a nice time the day before. So I'm really glad we did this, and I honestly really enjoyed it, and I'm glad I got such lovely footage using my good vlogging camera. It's not every day that I get to see sharks and sea turtles and all these really unique different fish, and I think I have some new favorite fish now. Okay, so enough of the fish footage, let's get to the photo shoot. We got up nice and early in the morning and got into part of our costumes and headed down to the studio space. Now, this is not something we have in Ottawa or Brockville or anything like that, but studio spaces like this are becoming more and more common in larger cities in Canada, and this one is just super special and super different, and I am so glad that Lex Photography and also Heavenly Visuals, the photographer we are working with this day, decided to book some photo shoot sessions at this location because it's super unique and super different. Ooh, we're gonna get footage of CJ dressing. Ooh. <laughs> It's so good. Also, I'm so blessed that I get to shoot this costume again. Myself and CJ of Go Beyond Cosplay had both never actually done any photo shoots at a studio location like this, so we were both really excited to actually get to use a space like this, and it really suited our cosplays really well. Oh my god, it looks so good, CJ. You look fantastic. Oh my god, look at you. And I had never worked with jewels of Heavenly Visuals, but CJ had and recommended them, and that's what kind of made this whole thing happen in the end. So I'm really glad I finally got to work with her. They were absolutely wonderful and super fun to work with, and I'm really glad I got all this footage that also includes her in it as well. She was so much fun and also a major Legend of Zelda fan, so that made this really fun, and she was fangirling over us, we were fangirling over the photos. It was very wonderful and very, very fun. Now the last time we photo shoot these particular cosplays, we didn't really have any story for our particular Zelda and Link. We just kind of went into it with just, let's take some nice photos, get a little bit of story going. But these are both original versions of Legend of Zelda characters, Link and Zelda. Mine, if you might be familiar with, I made during the pandemic as part of the Scrap Epic Challenge. So it's an original design based on things that I had on hand with me. And CJ completely separately designed their own Link and made their own Link, and now actually has two tunics for said Link. And it turns out that they complemented each other really well, and then we decided to do our first photo shoot back in September. Now, since said photo shoot, we have come up with an entire story for them. There was one time where CJ messaged me with a bunch of ideas for how their story might go, and then I rolled with it, and now I've written about 12 chapters of fanfiction called The Legend of Zelda Flames of Prophecy, which you can find online if you're clever enough. I like that you have more yeah. for like your OC like yeah. <laughs> like, They came up with the idea of pull, and then I ran on it. But I also figured this is also a good time to tell you a little bit about the story, not because I necessarily want you to go read the fanfic, but because I just actually am really happy with the story, and if you want just the brief cliff notes, I can give them to you here. In our story, Link is discovered to be the hero of legend, or the hero that's going to be the hero of legend, at a very, very young age, and is brought to the castle to start to train for his eventual mission, his eventual duty. And him and Zelda are mostly kept separately. Just a few odd times where they see each other in the distance, a few odd glances here and there. He's trained to be a knight, and she's training in the art of being a royal, a princess. Then one day at the knighting ceremony, when the two of them touch as Zelda is about to knight him officially, both of their hands glow gold and the Triforce symbols emerge from their hands, meaning that their pieces of the Triforce have awoken. I also kind of want to do this because I, it's, you are perfect for him kissing height. Like, just, you are cool now. She's also in here. I am a second 
Now, in this part of the timeline, there is a prophecy that says once the Triforce of Courage and the Triforce of Wisdom awaken in their respective holders, then the darkness will actually awaken at the next blue moon. So, for the elders and for the King of Hyrule, this is very alarming, and now they realize they need to prepare for the worst, because they did not expect both pieces of the Triforce to awaken simultaneously like that. I like the little bit of distance between us. It's before they start getting comfortable. So Link trains like never before, and Zelda is deep in her library with her mentor, trying to figure out how they can stop this, and just doing their best to do whatever they can. And this is when Link's mentor and Zelda's mentor decide that maybe the two should actually spend some time together, because if they're both fated to stop the darkness or be involved with all of this, they should probably get to know each other and essentially have to take their government allotted breaks together, as we put it, but they take tea every afternoon together, and they slowly start to get to know each other. In Zelda's studies, though, she does discover something finally that could help, and it seems like it has a loophole. The loophole saying that Zelda needs to be in the castle when the blue moon arises for all the darkness to awaken and for her power to be kidnapped by the, the cult of darkness, essentially. So, her and Link decide that night to escape the castle together and head to the home of the former home of Link's uncle. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to give you for now on the story, but that is the basis of the story, and we're really happy with it, and we're very fond of this version of Link and Zelda. We have a lot of fun cosplaying as them, as you can probably tell. Um, we have a lot of fun with the concept of their story, and we really enjoyed bringing some of those elements to life, like using teacups and books and stuff like that. And there's a scene where they share a cloak at one point when they're outside escaping the castle, and we had a lot of fun recreating those moments. Guys, can you stop being romantic for <laughs> 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 You had that pose before where you were doing the lead. There is something so wonderful about cosplaying an original version of a character that you love like this. I identify a lot with Zelda, many forms of her, CJ identifies with many of the forms of Link, and the fact that we were able to pull this story together and then act it out and then create this all on our own and a lot of other people seem to be enjoying it makes us really happy and it makes us a very unique experience within the realm of cosplay. Original cosplays can be so much fun and so such a unique experience compared to recreation cosplays. It's definitely making me consider making more versions of the Zelda because, spoiler alert, she does have more than one outfit in the story, just like Link does, and also maybe dipping my toes into more original cosplays as well. What kind of lift do you do? Yes. I was gonna ask, like, what are you capable of, but I think you're capable of everything. <laughs> this is true, you are strong. They're very strong. Sorry. I have to make sure I'm not taking you off while standing in my shirt. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> okay. I also enjoyed the whole experience of shooting in this studio space. It was so different, so unique, and of course, the photographers we're surrounded by were just wonderful. Lex would occasionally just bump into us because they're shooting on the other side. There were other amazing cosplayers coming in and out because they were shooting with Lex or with Jules, and it was just really such a different experience from convention shooting or even from shooting at destinations. It was all so specific and just wonderful and a really creative, interesting outlet. I'm so thankful that I got to do this photo shoot with one of my dearest friends and then also get to actually meet Jules for the first time, see Lex again, and also bump into some other friends while they were shooting. Lex is going to take the photo. Okay. Lex is my stand-in for when things are physically not possible for me. <laughs> Stand. Yeah. Uh, I, I see what you have. Yeah. It was a really neat experience and I would love to do something like this again. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed this little adventure and this little story time, I suppose. And look forward to the photos on my Instagram, on CJ's Instagram, on Jules's Instagram. I will put so many links down in the description below. And be sure to check out my next videos as well. So see you guys later.